Hey y'all, it's Brittany with Roasted Coffee Co. And as usual, I hope you're having an amazing day. Um, so if you are new to my channel, hello, welcome. I'm so happy that you're here. And if you are returning, oh, I love you. Shout out to you. Thank you for coming back. But anyways, in this video, I just wanted to talk about or give y'all 15 tips to run your business while you are still working your nine to five. Now, before we even get into it, let me say this, do not quit your nine to five. I know you're gonna have all these dreams and aspirations of wanting to own your own coffee shop or trailer or just whatever type of business. Do not do it. In this economy, we need all the money we can get. So um, that's not tip number one, but that's the most important tip. Do not quit your job. If it sucks, do all you can to find a new one. Okay, now let's get into tip number one. So number one is going to be create a business plan. You wanna start with a clear business plan that outlines your goals, target market, and strategies for growth. And it's gonna be a little hard in the beginning to know all of the numbers. So you can do a business plan that doesn't necessarily include the numbers like your uh, profit and margins and all of that. But just having some general outline of you know where you're starting and where you would like to end up is going to be super, super helpful. And I wish I would have done this in the beginning, but then again, I personally didn't know all of the um, different routes you could take in the coffee business. So I'm in the process of updating my business plan as well. As you guys remember, um, I got started with beans and grounds. I had no idea that there were actually like coffee trailers and drinks and stuff. <laughs> so that's why you need a business plan because not only does a business plan help you get to where you want to go, but it's also going to require you to do research, which is why I said I should have did mine in the beginning. But yeah, number one is create a business plan. Okay, y'all. So number two is going to be set realistic goals about what you can achieve with limited time and resources. You got to set achievable milestones. And so basically what that means is this is not a sprint. This is a marathon. So it's going to take you a long time to get up and running. And it might not even necessarily be your fault. It might be inspection times are extended out and there's really nothing that you can do about that. For example, in my last video, I talked about an auto safety readiness test inspection that I was going to have to get. I was under the impression, okay, I could just schedule the appointment and move on <laughs> with my life. Apparently not. So I was supposed to have this inspection done on October 25th, but because I'm getting ready to start a new job, honestly, y'all, I don't feel comfortable taking PTO that early. So my appointment had to be canceled. I went back on the website to see if I could reschedule my appointment, you know, a little bit down the line once I feel like a new job and there were no appointments available actually for the rest of the year. So I was crushed, kind of wanted to cry, I'm not gonna lie. So I ended up um, emailing the office and was like, hey, when are the November appointments gonna be open? And they told me we're actually booked up until January. Again, I was crushed, kind of wanted to cry, but then they were able to squeeze me in um, towards the end of November. So it's like, <laughs> these delay, I don't wanna say delays, but you know, things be happening during this process. So please be realistic. I've seen a lot of people who buy their trailers on Tuesday and they think by Friday they're gonna be up and running. Absolutely not. Especially when you're dealing with government entities and you have to get your trailer inspected and you gotta go get it registered and all kind of stuff. No, be realistic. Okay, so moving on to number three. Number three is time management. So you're going to have to figure out a way to efficiently allocate your time for both your job and your coffee business. You're gonna to have to use calendars and to-do lists to stay organized. And I do this every single day. You don't wanna be at work thinking about your business or working on business stuff and vice versa. You gotta keep the two separate because ultimately, 
Your coffee business is always gonna be there as long as you're working on it, but with your job, you really don't want your business to be interfering with what is paying you a steady paycheck. So I would recommend maybe on Sunday, sit down, figure out what you gotta do for, for work if you have to, and then figure out what you gotta do for your coffee business and work on those things throughout the week. But don't be one of these people out here like posting content when you're supposed to be working. All right, y'all, so number four is going to be delegate task, also known as get somebody else to do it. And so start looking at your processes and procedures and seeing if there are things that you personally can cut out and give to somebody else to do. For me, it's going to be stickers. I make stickers for my bags, for my cups. I do all the labeling and it, it can be very, very time consuming, especially if you're on a time crunch. So now what I do is I have my son make them. So he already has the files and I've been training him to use the Cricut software and my actual uh, Cricut machine. So now he makes the stickers and it saves me so much time and it gets him off his video game. So. Delegate, delegate, delegate. You're a boss, you're in charge. Learn how to tell people what to do. Okay, so number five is going to be automation. Use technology to automate routine tasks such as social media posting and email marketing. So if you have Canva, Canva will allow you to create a post and then schedule it to post to Facebook and Instagram, I believe. And then if you have a website, for example, I have Shopify, there are plenty of apps on there that will allow you to create uh, an email list or build an email list. And then you can send out emails that way. Honestly, y'all, I'm still struggling with this, especially when it comes to email marketing. I feel like my email gets blown up every single day by the same businesses every single day. And it's annoying to me. <laughs> so I think that's why I don't work on my email list because I don't wanna come off as annoying. But as I continue to grow my business, I'm like, okay, I think I kinda get it. You gotta stay in people's faces. So definitely use, definitely use that email list. Um, build your email list because it does come in handy. And I will say I have gotten a couple of sales off of sending emails. So yes, automation, do it. Alrighty, moving on swiftly and professionally to number six, it is online presence. You want to build a strong online presence through a website and social media to reach a customer base. I'm not going to get into this one too much because we all know about social media, but I will say when it comes to, um, I guess like following, finding followers and all of that, me personally, I hate that stuff. Go on Fiverr and find somebody else to do it for you. Okay, y'all, so number seven is quality control. You want to ensure that your coffee quality is consistent as it's the key to retaining and attracting customers. And I'm dealing with this literally as we speak. Now, I don't have nasty coffee, let me just say that. <laughs> but I have two roasters. So one is on the East Coast and the other one is here in Texas, just a few hours away. When I got started with Roastick, I started with the coffees from my East Coast roaster. So unfortunately, a lot of my best sellers are from that roaster, but it takes me a long time to get coffee. I know, I know, I know, I should have done some more research, but that is why I'm telling y'all, when you find a roaster or when you're looking for roasters, don't go the route that I did. I went with an out-of-state roaster because I wanted something different from what everybody else was serving here. And although it's been beneficial, it's also been a hassle because it takes me a long time to get coffee. And so when I have events and things like that, it's like, although I know I need to make sales, it's almost like I don't wanna let go of the product. It's weird, it's weird. But anyways, now I'm in the process of trying to figure out which coffees can I minimize from them and which coffees can I start per, start to promote more from my Texas roaster because at least I know with them, if I need something by Wednesday and I order it on Tuesday, I'll have it. So I say that all to say, um, make sure you choose a good roaster. 
and make sure they're able to get you what you need in a timely manner if you are not able to drive to them. Moving on to number eight. So number eight is going to be financial management. You wanna keep a close eye on your finances and separate your personal and business expenses. This is another one that I'm struggling with a little bit because honestly, whenever you are trying to get up and running, you're gonna pull money from wherever you can get it. And so if you have $1,000 in your personal savings account and you need $200 of inventory for your business, but you're in between events and your online sales have been a little bit low, you're gonna pull that money from your personal, from your personal money. I mean, it, it just is what it is. So once you are starting to get a little bit more established and the money is starting to come in, you want to make sure that you separate the two because it can turn into a mess when you got a light bill due, but you actually used it for, you used that money for inventory. <laughs> You don't want to be doing that. So keep it separate if you can. Although, like I said, I understand when you're first getting started, you're just going to pull the money from wherever you can, but separate, separate, separate. Get you a separate bank account for your business stuff. Um, so with me, I bank with Capital One for my personal stuff, but for my business stuff, I bank, I bank with Soul5. Like don't even use the same bank. It's got to be separate. Keep it separate. Moving on to number nine. Okay, so number nine is going to be inventory management. So I'm not going to get into this one too much because everybody's system is going to be different, but you definitely want to make sure that you implement an efficient inventory management system to avoid waste and shortages. Now I've had this happen where I go to an event and I take all of my coffee, I sell a whole bunch of coffee and then I come home and chill on the couch. I did not update my inventory. I didn't do nothing. I just sat down and chilled on the couch. And then lo and behold, I get an order for coffee that I actually just sold at the event. And so it is nothing worse than having to tell a new customer, okay? A new customer that, oh, I just got back from an event and I sold the cinnamon roll coffee that you just ordered. I've had this happen a couple of times and it's embarrassing. It is so embarrassing. And now what I do is in those moments that are down times at different events, I'll actually go through and update my inventory. So luckily with Shopify, they have a, um, they have an app. So if I sell three bottles of perp, not three bottles, three bags of per my last email, then I will go into the app and I'll update it right away so that, you know, my inventory is always up to date. Moving on to number 10. Number 10 is so important and it is customer feedback. So encourage customer feedback and use it to improve your products and services. So the reason why this is so important is because ultimately your customers are the ones that dictate how business is going to go. If nobody is buying anything, uh, that's a problem. <laughs> so you want to make sure that you ask them, Hey, you know, how did you like this product? How did you like this drink? Do you think there's anything that I can change or what are some things that you would like to see? Because ultimately if you don't have customers, then do you even really have a business? You know, so um, one of the ways that I actually used customer feedback is I had samples. I can't remember which event this was, but I had samples available. And there was a customer that basically told me, you should start bottling this. I would buy this. I would buy it and drink it and you need to start selling this. And that's pretty much how I started, um, started to get into bottling my cold brew and selling it at events because honestly, I wasn't thinking about that. <laughs> so it was a customer that suggested it and I acted upon it. And then now you see where we're heading. We're heading into getting a trailer or getting it up and running. So listen to your customers. Um, you don't have to agree with everything they say, but just hear them out and take it from there. Moving on to number 11. All right, y'all, so we're actually almost done. Um, number 11 is going to be network. So you want to attend industry events and connect with other coffee business owners for support 
and advice. One thing I will say about the community is for the most part, everybody is really, really nice and chill and always willing to help. So with that being said, go on Facebook. There's a whole bunch of coffee groups on there and join. And then when it comes to doing network events, I know out here in Houston, we have what's called a coffee symposium and it is like a two to three day event and it's just nonstop coffee from um, different manufacturers, cafes, just it's a lot <laughs> that happens during these couple of days. And last year was my first day vending. I did like a couple of hours at one of the events and I was a newbie. I was so scared and nervous, but everyone was very, very welcoming. And a lot of those people I was able to connect with and still stay in contact with to this day. So get out and mingle. Even if you think you're a newbie, just fake it till you make it. Okay. Moving on to number 12. So number 12 is going to be partnerships. Um, you want to explore partnerships with local businesses to cross promote and expand your reach. Now I'm going to have to do a story time about this because I attempted to do this two times and it didn't work out. And so I'm not saying that it's, that it can't be done. I'm just saying be very, very cautious and I'm going to leave it at that. Moving on to number 13. Okay, y'all, so number 13 is going to be hire right. Now, when hiring employees, you wanna make sure that you're selecting individuals who are reliable and can work independently. Now, me personally, it's just me. I don't have any employees, but I highly recommend that you guys join the coffee business owner groups because there are plenty of employee horror stories in that group. Now, I'm not going to mention <laughs> any stories in this video because I don't want them to be linked to any of our group members or cafes or whatever, but join the group and read some of the stories that are in there. It's going to make you not want to hire anybody. But I mean, if you grow and you get to that point where you're like, hey, I need employees, then good on you. Just be careful. Okay, y'all, so number 14 is going to be plan for growth. As your business grows, plan for expansion and invest in equipment, marketing, and space accordingly. So I didn't do this when I started Roastick. I was just under the impression that, okay, I'm just gonna sell beans and grounds and that's it. But then once I started to do my research, that's where I found out about coffee carts and trailers and trucks and buying your own roaster and starting your and starting to roast your own beans and all these different types of avenues you can travel in the coffee business you have catering you have like luxury events that you can do it's so many different avenues that you can travel so while you are planning for growth make sure you also do a lot of research because there are so many different lanes that you can travel in order to get this done. You don't have to just stick with selling beans or grounds or just have the trailer, especially if you market yourself a certain way. Um, you're going to really see there's so many things that you're capable of doing. I will say though, that even though I should have done a lot more research, especially in regards to marketing before I got started, I was very intentional about adding the tagline coffee for adults to my business name. And the reason why I did that is because not only is it intriguing, but people genuinely want to know like, what is this? What does it mean? Is it infused coffees? Yes, it is. Well, some of them are. Um, what, what is roasted? What does it mean? What's the story behind it? And so then once I tell them, you know, basically how I got started and what all my coffee names mean, they are really like, Oh my gosh, this is so relatable. I'll take two. <laughs> so you wanna make sure that you begin with the end in mind. Again, I wish I would have done this because I'd probably be a lot more further than where I am, but it's all good. One step at a time. Moving on to the final one, number 15. So ultimately number 15 is probably the most important and that is self care. Do not neglect your health and well-being. Running a coffee business and a full-time job can be taxing. So make sure that you take breaks and rest when needed. And let me put on my serious voice. 
Honestly, y'all, this has got to be the most important tip. So just to give you a little bit of backstory about me, coffee stuff aside, I had a very, 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 very stressful job. I worked in the insurance industry and I'm talking about customer interaction every single day. Everybody, um, I don't want to curse, but just to know it was a very stressful job that would have me on the brink of tears every single day. And I'm not gonna lie to y'all, I'm not good at managing my stress. So when my stress levels are at an all time high, um, I just, I, I would just much rather die if I'm being completely honest. And so I would be under that condition or working in those type of conditions Monday through Friday. And then on Saturday and Sunday, I would do my events. But when I would do them, it was almost like I was working, I was working in overdrive because I knew if I was not successful this weekend that I'm going to have to go back to the same job in shitty situation on Monday. And it's not like you can really quit a job <laughs> in two days or like find a whole career in two days. But that is what my mind was telling me. If you're not out making money, you're going to be stuck in the same shitty situation for the rest of your life. So when I was doing these events, I was working them out of survival mode. And when I didn't make the money that I wanted to make, or if it just wasn't a really good event, I would be even more crushed and defeated and stretched, stressed out than I was before. And finally, like, I just said, I can't do this anymore. So I stopped my coffee business. Um, it was, yeah, it was last year. I had just completely stopped and then, um, when it came to work, I, I've been trying to find a new job and luckily I just got one. I start on Monday, but y'all working like that back to back and working out of anger and survival is not healthy, especially when you would just prefer to die. And you're probably thinking, oh, she's just talking. No, I'm dead serious. So please take time for yourself. Um, if you're doing you know, back to back events. And at first it started okay, but then now, you know, you're not really into it and you're not making the money that you want to. There's nothing wrong with putting a pause on this and reevaluating things. There's also not a problem with you just completely stopping and saying, you know what, this isn't for me. Let me sell off my equipment and move on to the next adventure. But please y'all, please take time for yourself um, in anything that you do or anything that you're working towards. Take time for yourself. And I'm just gonna leave it there because I don't wanna be crying. <laughs> but um, that's pretty much it. 15 tips to help you run your business while working at nine to five. Again, thank you guys so much for being here. Y'all know I hate saying this part, but like, comment, subscribe, share, follow, email me, and I will see y'all in the next one. Bye.